What is the secret of the women of Miss Marvel? We're midway through the Miss Marvel Disney Plus six-part miniseries, and by now we've gotten a lot of answers, but we may have more questions and answers, but I have a theory that involves the entire female bloodline that Kamala Khan's currently got going on, and uh, how I think things will shake out before the series is over, and how all of it will shape the trajectory of who Kamala is and who she becomes as her character arc continues in the MCU. And we're going to discuss all of that right now. Welcome back to the Mama Saga, where this Marvel loving mama is a mother by day, but breaks down comic book sagas, movies, and shows like Miss Marvel by night. Before we go any further, it should go without saying, but I'll just issue a warning. Spoiler alert! There are spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched all three episodes of Miss Marvel yet, because we're going to go through parts of them to discuss Kamala Khan's female bloodline in this video, well, if you need to catch up on the miniseries so far, then you might want to exit this video and go watch it and come back. <laughs> okay, so first up we have Aisha. Aisha's been referenced several times leading up to the third episode of Miss Marvel, and that's when we met the character in the flesh. In a flashback that ran about five years pre-partition in what was British-occupied India, when we first meet Aisha in episode three, it's clear that she's a leader, she's bright, and she goes for that bangle on the severed blue, likely Cree arm in the rubble of the Ten Rings Temple, and she puts it on to activate it. She wants to go home. I do believe at that point in time, she wanted to bring home all of the clandestines group with her back to what is being called the Noor dimension or light dimension of the MCU. We're in the multiverse now, and so it makes sense that if you've been exiled or otherwise stranded from your home world, you might need a device, magical tech, or both to get you out of where you are to get you back to where you want to go. Najma, Karen's mother, calls Aisha's sister, but we do not know if that's just a term of endearment or if they're actually sisters. But for now, no matter. We do know that the device activates and we see Aisha's eyes light up and the bangle opens up but then shuts back down. Why? We're not sure about yet. We may come to find out the specifics before the miniseries is over. That's like what's called a Chekhov's gun, something that gets introduced in a plot and is open loop. Audiences do not like open loops that never get closed, so curiosity is in introduced and keeps them interested, but the best books, screenplays, shows, and movies do close that loop. So I do think this particular secret will be revealed before episode six is over. My best guess right now, perhaps you need to have the right DNA as well as be born of the particular world the bangle is on in order for the magic or tech or both to work. Remember, Kamala has the right DNA and has also been born here on planet Earth. So the explanation might be that simple or it might not. Because here's a theory I haven't heard anyone else bring up yet, but if Aisha and the rest of the clandestines were exiled from the Noor dimension, I do not think that those with power would allow for those who are exiled to, by themselves, use the Noor or people or Jin's own devices to come back home that easily. Think about it. If it's magic, those with power in the Noor dimension might have closed off the Bengals' magic so that it can't work for those who should remain locked out. If the Bengals tech, honestly, those in power in the newer dimension might be able to scramble or override the tech so that it can't work for those whom access has been revoked or denied. Just a thought. When the Illuminantes, who collectively seemingly know nearly everything, are asked about Aisha later, they refer to her having more than one family, her Terran or Earth family, resulting in the birth of Sana, and I'm sure her Jinn family she had elsewhere in the cosmos. They also say that Aisha killed a man, and that could have happened to protect her daughter, Kamala's Nani, from being killed in the brutal battles as the result of the partition. Also, according to the Illuminantes, Aisha allegedly cursed everything she touched. 
I bet you that if anyone caught Aisha using her powers, whether she meant for them to see her do it or not, they thought that she was a cursed human. Because let's face it, the Quran forbids the worship or approval of jinn. It's haram or forbidden. So anyone using magic or otherworldly powers could definitely come across as cursed haram, or forbidden, whether someone's Islamic back in the day or not, come to think of it. If you don't understand something, you could very well reject it out of hand and or be scared of it, right? Then when the partition happened five years later from the time Aisha discovered the bangle, I bet you Nani or Sana couldn't have been more than four years old. This presumes Aisha didn't have an earthly family before the whole Ten Rings Temple escapade that happened in the flashback of episode three. I don't think she did. I think the clandestines very well could have been her family or people she that she considered to be like family to her if Najma's re reference to her as sister isn't literally true. Next, we're on to Sana. So the partition happened in 1947, and it split up Aisha's family, with her apparently older and infirm husband getting on the last train out of the neighborhood before it was consumed by violence and or overtaken by opposing forces. But Aisha never made it to the train to join him. We don't know why yet. We do know that little Sana was at one point separated from her father, but that she found him because of a trail of stars that led her through the calamitous fighting and chaos directly to him. Aisha sent the trail of stars, perhaps because she never meant to go any further with them. We don't know for sure again yet, but for Sana to get the bangle, she must have been given it by Aisha before she sent her off to her father using her jinn powers to create the bright bits of light or stars to get her safely on the train, reunited with her father, and as safe as she was ever going to be under the circumstances. We keep seeing a black and white old time looking train show up at times when Kamala's got the bangle on her, it sometimes simply just activates and you see a bright light and typically a train, but sometimes if you don't see the train, you hear it nonetheless. Like the one time that Kamala got a vision of Najma sent to her, but she didn't know who it was yet. Does the whole train imagery relate somehow to the partition? Sure. Does it mean that Aisha was somehow killed by the train? I do not think so right now. If Aisha were dead, then who's sending that imagery to Kamala? I think someone was trying to warn Kamala of danger because we know that Najma and the rest of the clandestines were out to use Kamala and didn't care if she and her planet were destroyed in the process of sending them back to the Noor dimension or not. I'm thinking that Someone is Aisha. I believe that Aisha is alive somehow and was not killed by the clandestines. Some theorists are saying she was pushed in front of the train by them. I do not know about that right now. I think she's alive. When everyone left the Ten Rings Temple, it seemed clear to me that they left on good terms, and we currently have no evidence that anything's changed since. Now, Sana and her daughter Maniba are kind of estranged. Sana didn't travel from Pakistan to America for Amir's wedding. Sana doesn't ever seem to speak directly with her daughter Maniba, but she talks on the phone plenty to Kamala, her granddaughter. Sana definitely saw the train projections or visions because she called Kamala at the end of episode three, all in a tizzy, asking if Kamala, if she'd seen the train and begging her to travel to Karachi where Kamala's relatives either were born in, like her dad and mom, or came to post-partition, like her currently unnamed great-grandfather and her grandmother or Nani Sana. But now we have to examine Muniba. Muniba for sure does not have a close relationship with her mother, Sana. When Sana sends her over like personal effects to her family in Jersey City, New Jersey, Maniba declares it as junk and banishes it to the attic. She doesn't even want Kamala to take the bangle and wear it. She casts the bangle and the red material it was wrapped in 
back in the box. In fact, after Kamala botches her driver's test and her parents take her home, it's Maniba who basically decried the fact that her daughter was a dreamer whose head was in the clouds like her mother, Sana. You have to wonder at this point in the miniseries if Sana had told tales of her mother, Aisha, and her powers to Maniba, who just rejected them out of hand, thinking her mother was a goofball, or given what the Illuminantes know, did Aisha's exploits follow her husband and child over to Karachi, casting a pall over the family's reputation, leading Maniba to, as she says in episode two, leave Karachi because they wanted to come to America for a fresh start? I mean, seriously, it could be both. Mothers and daughters don't always get along under normal circumstances. And in a more conservative culture, and then a conservative tradition respecting religion on top of it, and there's at least two, if not three, strikes against Sana and Maniba ever getting along. After all, if Sana embraced the family's special powers and bloodline, unlocked and or enhanced by the bangle, and Maniba knew that was what she was doing, but wanted to have nothing to do with that life. I mean, you know, plus moms, they're never cool to their kids, no matter how they try. Well, that's rejection on top of rejection, right? Here's the thing. Does Maniba know about the power of the bangle? I think yes. Does she know that her family has a magical type of makeup or DNA? Again, I think yes. Do we have a poker's tell when it comes to Maniba knowing about this? Yes, and it's not so much in the lines that she speaks in episodes one, two, or even three. It's in the blink and you missed its significance moment when she offers Bruno Corelli some leftovers from the family dinner he missed, her going into the kitchen and 60 seconds transpire max before she comes out and has a huge bag wrapped up with goodies, not just for Bruno, but for his grandmother whom he lives with. Seriously, nothing in the MCU exists and or is done and or is spoken without it meaning something. Maniba's in on the act. In episode one towards the end, she says to Kamala, I've seen what happens when someone gets lost in their fantasies. And they're definitely discussing Sana or Nani at that point. Kamala and she clash at this point where she tells her mother she doesn't need another story about Nani. And Maniba says that Kamala's behavior in defying her wishes is a betrayal and asks her if she wants to be a good girl or a cosmic head in the, the clouds type person. Maniba just doesn't like her daughter acting like the other women that she's related to and doesn't want to encourage her daughter to lean into being different or likely using her powers even though she has them. <laughs> in episode two, Maniba specifically says, Kamala, I know that you are growing up, but I need you to stay safe. That's all that matters. Later on in that episode, when Yusuf is telling the partition story to Amir's bride-to-be, he indicates, that's why we moved to America, so that our children can be anything they wanted to be. Maniba nods, and but adds, almost anything. The look on Maniba's face when Yusuf shares that Sana was led to her father allegedly because she followed a magical trail of stars to him, well, to me, it says it all. She knows. She knows about the powers and what the bangle can do, but she just doesn't want it all to factor into her family and their lives, including her daughter, Kamala. But that's too bad, because next we have, of course, Kamala. Just like Aisha, when Kamala put on the band or bangle, it unlocked, elongated, and her eyes lit up, showing she's got the DNA and the gin type magic within her. But unlike what happened with Aisha, Kamala was able to truly make use of the bangle. Sana, I bet you did so as well, and Maniba likely saw her and couldn't stand it or didn't want to go down that path for religious and or personal reasons. That's okay to each their own. We'll likely find out more as Kamala goes off to Pakistan. Kamala was able to briefly enter the newer dimension where the bangle was first activated by the light from AvengerCon and the light being emitted from all of the devices and cameras and such. She, I'm sure much like her great-grandmother Aisha and her grandmother Sana, is likely reveling in her powers 
but is also simultaneously struggling to keep her secret so that her family and community are protected from harm and likely won't also reject her for who and what she is. It's been a long and winding road through what's now four generations of women, but I do think that the powers that they have, independent of the bangle but augmented by it, will not stay a secret too much longer, at least to all of the members of the Khan family. The rest of the planet may not ever find out Miss Marvel's identity, and that will help to protect the Khans, let alone the members of their mosque. But I do think Aisha's going to show up in this miniseries again before it's over, yes. Do I think that we're going to find out why the clandestines were exiled before the miniseries is over? Yes. Do I think the second bangle is going to show up because in episode three, in the first scene, the flashback scene, it was mentioned that there was another bangle? Yes, yes, I really do think it's going to be found or we're going to learn where it is at least. Why? I again think that the bangle Kamala currently has is part of a pair of negabands. So if you missed my previous video, negabands, why does Miss Marvel have them? I specifically lay out all of the powers of the negabands have versus the powers that Kang the Conqueror has. Once you're done watching that video, you're going to be very likely to agree with my theory I share in that video in terms of how Kamala and her powers, including the bands, will lead her to a clash with Kang the Conqueror in Phase 5 of the MCU. Anyway, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to The Mama Saga for more comic book saga breakdowns, Salty Mama style. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.